Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we set up a very basic interface. Now in this lecture, we're going to be prepared to actually update this variable, the firm name, the cache, and the current city from a flow graph. So to hold our flow graph, we could really put it on any of these objects. Like I could put it on main camera, I could put it on canvas, but I really like creating, uh, right clicking here and creating an empty game object and just calling it game manager for now. For a simple game like that, this is fine. In a really complex game, you're gonna have multiple game managers. Or it'd be too complicated to have everything in one. For this, we're gonna build around a central game manager. And from on this object now, we can come over here and add component and say flow machine, or f just type flow and it'll bring up flow machine. And our flow machine here uh, could be a macro and it's asking us to create a new one here. But instead, because we're only going to have one of these in the entire project, and we only we then can use this in bed. And so it's pretty much recommended if you're only going to ha ever have one of them, just use the embed because you can always convert it to a reusable macro later. So now let's give our flow machine a name. We'll just call it the game manager flow machine for now. And basically what you have down here in our flow graph is that whenever the game starts up, this start event's going to happen. So just like you would think, it's going to come out here and allow us to start performing actions. So one of the things we can do, and I'm going to right click to stop that, is we can actually drag and drop from our scene here into our graph. So I'm going to pick this firm name text up and drag and drop it in here. And from that, you'll notice that it, it lists all these different components. And these components actually match the components that you'll see over here in the inspector. And so if I click on text, I can see all these different available options for text. And most often I actually don't use the list very much here because the, the search up here is so good. It just really is. But I wanted you to be aware of this being available here. But if, if you scroll down and keep scrolling, you'll notice that down here there's a, a text set. And when I choose that, then that basically creates this action you can see here that will let us set the text. And I can just come in here and type my firm. Now if I ran it now, this will never happen because it's not wired up to the start event. And to wire it up, it's just as simple as clicking your left mouse button and holding and dragging it here. And so this is the flow. We're going to go from here to here. And we can run it and see the result. My firm. Just like that, placed it in. And we can do the same thing with cash, for example. So I can put this cash text up and drag it in here. I can say text.text .text, so I don't have to find it and just click on it here. So that's a little bit easier way. We can tell it after it sets this text to just go and set this text. So one right after another. And I could come in here and just put a zero for now. And so let's run that. And you'll see, or I could put in whatever I wanted in terms of a of a value here and then you'll see that it puts it here and I could do the same thing with the city but we don't need to do that you can see how this works now let's see how we can load this out of a variable because we don't want things just hard coded in our graphs we're gonna load many things out of variables might as well load the firm name as a good example now just as, as to see how this could work if you wanted to take this literal string and, and pull it in here I can pull this out and notice that there's a string literal here and if I put in here welcome to bolt pirate trader and run that it's gonna feed this literal into the text set here and you can see how it how it's there and it it's cutting it off because the objects not big enough but you get the functional idea but we really don't want that instead what we want to do is create a scene variable to hold things like the name of the firm, the cash, the debt, how many guns you have, those kind of things that you're going to have in our in the pirate game. And so over here, if we click on scene variables, then we can come over here and actually create variables that will be sh shared across the whole scene. And so we know we want the firm name to be one of them, and I can hit enter and pick the type to be string. And then from there, I can type in welcome to pirate trader and I'll then come here and say cash 
hit enter and make this an integer and maybe and I misclick there an integer maybe we start out with $250 so this is just two variables we set up you can reorder these if you want just so you have them in order maybe of how important they are to you and then what we can do is load this firm name right out of here so one way to do that would be to left click and drag and then when it comes up just type in the variable name firm name and as soon as I type that you'll notice we have a git and a set well we want the git and just like that when we run we're going to be feeding whatever is in this variable here into our text set and you can see there's the result just like that And you can also notice that it's showing us here passing it along pretty nifty huh so now let's try to do the same thing with cash now if I drag here and I choose and I type in cash we can surely get the cash just like that just like we did with the firm name and you'll notice now that we're taking cash and we're feeding it into cash text let's go ahead and try that and see what happens and what you'll notice is we got a red box here and we have an error we can see it down here at the bottom it says invalid comparison conversion exception cannot convert from system int32 to system.string and you'll see that also if you come to the console you're gonna see the error as well and if you click on it it will show you the object and if but if you double click on it you're not gonna get anywhere that's one of the things when it comes to debugging you're gonna to need to go to the flow graph and look and infer what's wrong in this case it's telling you it can't convert this integer and you can see it coming in here at 250 over into a text it's two different data types this is a number welcome to pirate trader is a string but we can convert that we just stop running here so we stop running our game left click here and drag and when you let go you can just type in the function you need and one of the things I really like about Bolt is it really is going to help you kind of learn C sharp if you intend to go that way because I can just type two string right now which is, would be the exact same command I would use here int dot two string it makes it really easy for someone who knows C sharp to learn Bolt and makes it most likely easier for, for someone that comes from Bolt to then apply this to C sharp because you can see the syntax right here whatever integer I provide I just have to type dot to string and then from here bring it over into here and you can see now we have orange mas matching orange just like that and I'll drag it so it's easy to see now let's run it and see what happens and you'll see now 250 is in there now the current city is a little bit different we're gonna get to do some other other ways of managing I we could just you know have a current city string and fill it in just like we did with the firm name but remember current city is gonna be a from a list of cities we're gonna have more than one city not just the, the one that, that we're currently on. So let's see how we can represent that in our variables. We come here to our scene variables and we type cities and hit plus. And now we come down here and come down to Ludic and choose that and come here to AOT list, just like that. And so this will let us keep a list of cities. And for right now, we'll just represent those as strings. So I hit plus and I come here, say string, and we'll say Hong Kong like that and we'll add again and we have to select this again and say string and in this case we'll say Shanghai and add again and let's just do one more string Nagasaki like that and so now we have a list here of cities of these three different cities and let's see how now we can update this in our current city so what we can do is in, in addition to right clicking and just typing in cities here that's you can do that like we've been doing to get the cities we can also drag from here as well so we can actually pick this and drag it on to here but one of the issues when you do that is you just have to remember to change this from object to scene it thinks you're dragging this and you want to reference this as an object but you really want to reference it as a scene 
because when it's in this flow graph, it's going to break if you don't have this set as seen. But now we're getting a list of cities coming out of here. And what we can do is we can actually type first and say first item. And this is actually going to get the first string or the first item out of this list of cities. And we can then, we're going to use a different way. I'm not going to drag and drop it this time. I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to type in, let's see, current city. Or I'm going to say set text, text.set. I apologize for my mistake there. Text doc text set. So I sh I could have duplicated these, but I just wanted to show, uh, and then we got to make sure it's coming into here, obviously, not into the object. Then we want this to come into here. You can right click to break them, but the text we want to set you can actually pick by clicking this as well, and that's what I wanted to show you. You can click this little dot, and we can come up here and say current city text, and so kind of like these other ones that we're setting here this one's just a little bit different we got a list we're getting out we're grabbing the first one and then we're going and setting that as the text because it's a string remember the cities is a list of strings so it's just gonna work just like that run it and there we go we learned how to set up a string and update it we learned how to set up an integer and update the screen text for that. And finally, we took a little bit, you know, more complex way of doing things. It actually represents how we need to store this data. So we have our cities in a list here. We set up a list and then we grabbed the cities. We found just the first item and then we flowed that to update the city text. I'm going to point out that this can go away. We don't need the update event there. So that pretty much, I'm going to end this lecture here. And in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to start looking at how you can take this and we're going to reorganize it a little bit so that it's, it's not going to get so complex. Because if this graph kept adding to it and adding to it, it's just going to get way, way complex. So we're going to learn about super units. And then we're going to t jump in at the same time and learn about state machines. So the next lecture is going to be very feature packed as well. And we are going to be making rapid progress in the overall architecture of this game. So look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.